So now that we've essentially finished the Modern Warfare 2 beta, I thought it'd be nice to kind of revisit and kind of give my overall thoughts of where the game sits now based off some of the changes they've made throughout the beta and give overall pros and cons of the game and kind of give you an idea of whether or not this is something you should buy. At the end of the day, it's your money. You can do whatever the heck you want with it, but I will discuss a lot of pros and cons and I will give solutions for a lot of the cons that I'm going to cover today. If you feel like if there's anything I missed, make sure you do comment that down below and this video does have a sponsored section, which we'll do right Right now today's video is sponsored by raid shadow legends raid is the first game to bring true console level experience to your phone with hundreds of artifacts to equip and, and over 600 champions blessed with unique skills you can build your own team and develop your champion and raid your way raid has just released a super powered legendary version of everybody's favorite champion death knight the whole raid community has been waiting for this for a long time and ultimate death knight is something everyone has been hoping for ultimate death knight has a solid kit that will help players progress through dungeons Dungeons, the Doom Tower, as well as clan activities, and the Hydra Boss. The best part about the update is everyone can get the brand new Ultimate Death Knight for free. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and October 27th, and you'll add the Ultimate Death Knight to your collection, but there's even more. This month, Raid just released a new feature, Awakening, and a brutal new dungeon, the Iron Twins Fortress. If you're good enough to take down the Iron Twins, you'll see a huge payoff being able to awaken your champion. Awakening your champion lets you choose a powerful blessing that can transform form how they perform in battle. It's great when features like this are added because they add an entirely new level of depth and strategy. There's never been a better time to get started, but there's more. You can also use the DK Rises promo code for a bunch of free items to instantly level your new strongest champion. And the promo code's usable for both new and existing players. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click the link in the description or scan my QR code on the screen. You'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking about a free epic champion, Tyrell, 200k silver, one energy refill, and one XP boost along with an ancient shard, which will be waiting for you right here in the top right when you log in. Thank you again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back. So the pros, there's gonna be a lot of those. First off, we got we got graphics. I don't know how they managed to do it, but the graphics of this engine or whatever they've done to it, make it look better and feel better in terms of overall, like in the environment than Modern Warfare 2019. Audio, the way it does with all the weapons where they have that little thumpiness to them uh, in terms of the realism with the water mechanics where things float the way the vehicles interact and all that type of stuff it feels like a very polished game weapon inspects all that stuff uh, the other part that was nice in this beta which we don't always get is the availability of modes very often they just omit things like search and destroy and we just don't get to try those things out Fortunately, they didn't give us a hardcore trial run for people that really like that and to have the immersion with no minimap, no compass, to really feel how the game would play in a hardcore setting. So that's unfortunate, but besides that, we had pretty much everything, even their experimental modes that they're really trying out and seeing how those are gonna play. And that leads us into third person mode, which I think is a hit for the vast majority of people that have been trying it. Obviously, people are figuring out the quote unquote meta. And I think overall that mode in general has played much better than I expected it, uh, even though it's not necessarily designed for me. That's okay, there are a lot of people that are really loving it, especially people coming from other games that play a third person perspective. Weapon progression system seems a little bit confusing at the moment, but overall I think when it's all said and done, it will be one of the best systems we've ever had in terms of progression, where you don't have to combine yourself to one weapon for 70 levels. I, I, I'm really hoping we don't revert back to that, at least in this method. Maybe it takes you a couple hours and you switch to a new gun. And some people are kind of torn on that part of it. But overall, the last time you have to play to level up weapons, I think is a W. Maps in general were far superior to what we've had in previous Call of Duties, unless they were remakes. And I would say that the vast majority of these maps play well. Even the Ground War maps play well for their specific style of play. If you're using the vehicles, you're getting involved with that. Cool, it's a huge map. You can hit some insane snipes. I managed to hit over a 640 meter snipe, uh, which was a lot of fun, hard to do, especially when we don't have the bullet velocity and high zoom optics. Very interesting to see kind of how this progresses as people get more play time. The general 6v6 maps, most of them played well. I feel like the museum map maybe felt a little bit too big. Maybe an 8v8 would work for that, but I haven't really seen any indication that they're interested in doing pacing the way that we had it in Vanguard with six, eight, 12, or whatever on the map. Lack of doors interfering with the gameplay is also huge. There's plenty of maps that have doors and there's multiple doors on there, but it doesn't really feel like they're they're annoying or getting in the way, which is a cool way to introduce them. They're functional, 
They make sense. Console FOV for multiplayer and Warzone 2. That's a W. People asked for that for basically almost two and a half to three years. And that's a W. I think that's one thing to kind of take off the table. Flight canceling. I, I'm, I'm a fan of not having to mash my buttons to destroy my controller. I think in multiplayer, it's kind of one of those things that it can be a skill gap in certain scenarios. But it also creates a lot of imbalance where... The person you're slide canceling on can't actually do anything so it's like there's not the skill involved but there's there's definitely two sides to that and i understand that and that's why it's gonna be in the pros and the cons uh even the workarounds the unintended versions will either be patched or they're not gonna be practical those are a lot of positives right good th good stuff there and then when we go to the cons i think there's a lot of interesting things because they did make tweaks and changes and i'm going to talk a little bit about those systems there number one thing i'll talk about going back to the progression is the weapon leveling system the first weekend it was super fast you could literally play one match and you'd max level a weapon up to like 19 or 20 depending on what the max level was even though a lot of weapons were locked at level one the second weekend or the when the xbox and all the the pc people got to use it it was significantly slower i had already maxed out all my guns but i was watching gameplay of people playing it for the first time and it was taking them multiple matches to just level up the gun and progress like what are we going to end up with because i think the first system maybe is a little too fast like you're literally zooming through it which I don't have a problem with. I don't think playtime should be artificially inflated by my banking it long to level of weapons. And then on the other end, it's too slow. It's like, damn, I got to use this garbage gun to get attachments or even unlock the next version in the in the in the weapon tree. So you got to balance that out. I hopefully they find a happy medium where to do a whole tree, maybe it takes you seven hours instead of seven hours per weapon, especially since the attachments will carry over and stuff like that. So I, I think they need to fine tune that, but. It shouldn't be so impossible to level up guns that it feels like a chore. The perk system. I, I think, uh, you know, obviously it plays a little bit better with the, the perks coming up in two minutes instead of four for that first bonus perk. And then four minutes instead of eight. And then obviously your score cuts that down so you get a little bit faster. But as a solo player, I'm not a fan of the system at all. I think joining a match in progress, I don't have a chance to have ghosts. The enemy team already is spamming UAVs. Like, I didn't even get a chance to do that. The random five players I joined that were getting dumpstered, they were doing that. So all that I'm going to do in that situation, I'm just going to leave the match. Like, I don't even have a chance to compete because I'm already going to have three deaths by the time I get my first kill or something like that when you're spawning in. So I'm not a fan of that. There are other layers to matches in progress and matchmaking and stuff. But overall, I don't like the perk system for that reason. If I was playing in a full party, I'd love the perk system. Make it so that nobody gets perks. Because if I'm in a full party of three KD players, we're going to just steamroll the lobbies. We're going to chain our UAVs together. We're all going to get advances. We're going to know where literally everyone is. We're just going to steamroll the lobby. Personally, that's not a lot of fun because it's just kind of like you don't even have to think. You just go through the motions. I think they got to balance that out because the, the perks in general just kind of lead to steamrolling with the way it is right there. Uh, in terms of uh, dead silence, a lot of debate on this. People, whether it should be a filled upgrade or a perk. Personally, I like the ninja perk because it doesn't make your footsteps dead silent. It makes them quieter. They've already expressed they're not changing this. So we're, we're stuck with dead silence as a field upgrade. If you want to be able to run freely around the map without people just aimbotting you through the wall because they hear your audio. Uh, and it's that precise, which is a positive. But it, it's kind of like the range is so far that you could literally know exactly. Oh, somebody's making a play. I can hear them coming around there. I heard the floor. So I know exactly what room they're in. It's like very good. So uh, kudos to those people. But it does kind of artificially slow down the game a little bit. Because as soon as I hear something, I stop so that nobody else can hear me. Because if I can hear them, that means if I'm moving, they can hear me. So I stop, wait for them to get closer, and then I just take the right angle to kill them. Not necessarily as skillful because... You know, I know where they're at. They don't know where I'm at. Kind of makes a little bit of imbalance. But that's a whole other thing. The dead silence, when you bring it out, now they made it where it's a device where you bring out, it makes a lot of buzzing noise. So it literally gives away your position if, if somebody is in the area. So they'll know you popped it. And then they'll just be pre-aiming a specific area even harder. There, I think they should just copy what they did in 2019. So much of this game has been copy and paste over. So why not just copy what already didn't work, but worked in that game for what it was? And it was what it was, right? Uh, another part is uh, going into visibility. And this is something that a lot of the recent Call of Duties kind of struggled with, where it's really hard to spot players. And I don't think they should just put people's name above the head because obviously for a certain group of people, that's like ruins immersion. And there is a skill in spotting players. But it's kind of one of those things where it's like you can't tell if somebody's a dead body or not. Maybe they got to adjust the lighting. They've done this before where they've been able to fix it. Uh, but 
it, w it would be a shame if that like they just cop out and put a name tag above i think there are ways to fix it and other games do it perfectly fine they don't need to highlight you with the big old red red uh, outline but at the end of the day it needs to be a distinction that you are a an enemy player uh, versus a regular teammate and there are things to do with this with teammates there are little dots above their heads that can be misconstrued if they're further away than this enemy it can actually be above their head and that half a second delay that you take to react because you don't recognize that that's an enemy player is enough to get you killed in the game it's way too fast so there should be a setting oh, to dial that back so that maybe you can only spot teammates at 10 meters the mini map is perfectly visible. I know where all my teammates are. That dot system has never been a functional system to me. Go even in Modern Warfare when they initially added it, it was initially there because we were supposed to have no mini map. And then once they added the mini map back, even without the dots, they decided to still keep those little dots on there, which have have always been an issue ever since they've been in the game. If a teammate is behind an enemy, you, you can't tell the difference. And that's something they could easily fix. I could turn my teammate dots off. I don't need those. I only need the minimap to know where my teammates are. It's pretty straightforward. The minimap obviously isn't traditional. Obviously, uh, as if you've played Call of Duty for a while, when you fire unsuppressed weapon, you do pop up on the minimap. That still happens if a UAV is in the air and the person has ghosts. They'll still pop up on the minimap. They've carried that over. They kind of use the, the compass as a whatever tool. I think that's obviously one piece of the puzzle. The game still plays relatively okay without the red dots. The bigger issue is tied with the spawns. If the spawns actually worked and, and were as you would expect, the minimap's like a non-issue. The problem is anytime we've had without the dots, the spawns have always been bad. And that's because Modern Warfare 2019 introduced a squad spawn system, which uses irregular spawns and irregular logic, whether it's sight lines, uh, uh, proximity to enemy, what flags you own in domination, for example. There's like almost no correlation there to common sense logic on the way the map should operate in terms of sides and they have not addressed that they literally copy and pasted it they have made no acknowledgement to their crappy spawn system and vanguard started off with that system because sledgehammer i guess incorporated them over i don't know but at the end of the day they ended up switching them out and they were infinitely better after that switch not perfect because spawns can still have their issue but when you're running into 20 times you see this issue per match it's a big problem that it's like if, if you're more of a newer player, or you're coming from a different game that's not Call of Duty, you, you might not necessarily notice much, but it's kind of glaringly obvious how bad the spawns are in the game with the squad spawn. Like I think if they fix those a little bit better, like how Vanguard at least tried to improve them and Treyarch has generally had good spawns, then the minimap is like almost a non-issue because then you can kind of like use it to understand where people are going to be based off spawn logic not guessing because spawns are random or irregular uh in general a lot of the things in the game are pretty slow we got sprint to fire time ads time after you dive during a slide i think they just got to tune those a little bit and not make them so they're zero like a non-existent sprint to fire time there still needs to be like a penalty for doing certain types of movements but right now it's it, they're the, the movements are slower than the ttk so if i slide i cannot fire my weapon throughout a slide so i'd basically never slide uh, maybe to get to cover away when I'm not intending to shoot. And maybe that's the purpose of it. But then it's like, well, then I'll never actually use that as part of my core gameplay loop. It'll be like when I'm running away. But normally, like, TTK is so fast, you you might not even have enough time to run away. Dolphin Dive is very similar to that, where you're not going to be able to pull up your weapon. You're not able to aim down sight until you actually hit the ground. Any competent player is going to kill you instantly. Um, that gets us into a reload cancel, which has the different stages. I am not a fan of it, like the system, but it's okay. I've gotten used to it. It's like one of those things that it's bearable. I don't think they necessarily are going to revert it. I don't think they're going to change it. So it's not necessarily something to necessarily complain about, like fix this. It's annoying. You just kind of get used to using your secondary weapon or making sure that you are in a solid spot, finishing that complete reload animation so that you're not caught off guard. But obviously as it is, when you get caught off guard, it's not something you expected. So you just got to get in the habit of swapping to your secondary because it's always faster than reloading. The actual weapon visibility, there's a lot of muzzle flash and smoke that comes off this and they've had these issues in previous titles and they always dial it in. So I'm imagining they're going to fix that. Hopefully we see some gameplay as closer. Maybe they do a little bit of like stuff where they caught next saying, look what we've done with the gameplay. We've fixed this. Look at how clean it looks now. 
uh, and generally they get that dialed in because it's kind of hard to, to see people once you start firing a couple shots. If you don't manage to kill them within those first three or four shots, it can get a little bit wonky on visibility, especially at range. TTK, I think, is a little bit fast, but I don't recall a time that TTK has ever been changed. And theoretically, the only thing they could do, which in my opinion would make the game play way better, is remove a lot of the headshot multiplier. Previous Call of Duties did it where you had to have an attachment to get higher headshot damage which was a high caliber and there was a trade-off you had to lose an attachment to have more recoil or something like that but in this particular case it's like there's no penalty you get flinched so sometimes shoot first die first because you flinch the person in your head and the headshots are going to do almost two times the damage in some cases and, and that puts you in a disadvantage where you feel like you got cheated by the game even though you landed first shot you were in the right position the flinch can um determine the fight so i think lowering the headshot multiplier so you need way more headshots to get the faster ttk or almost all headshots and then you the body shot ttk would be more reliable consistent and you wouldn't feel like you're getting cheesed in some of these kill cams one thing that seems universal is the ui is horrendous in the game in the menus in the match when you're trying to party up with friends it says everyone's offline there's so much wonkiness and bugginess i think they're going to scrap it entirely spectator cam in single life modes Single life modes play great in this game, but if you end up dying and you need to spectate in one of the modes, they do this like third person camera on the head and it kind of has this weird awkward look where you really aren't like looking from the person's perspective and I think it just needs the option to toggle that from first person to third or completely scrap the third and stay in first person. Whatever is easier, but the option definitely needs to be there. And I already touched a little bit on spawns, but one other issue with it is the little fly-in mechanic. When you choose your spawn or you spawn in between lives or whatever and then it starts from the sky and it does that little bit of a fly-in, that is a flawed system because what ends up happening is when you're in this imaginary spot up here before you get loaded in, the game has decided that you were spawning in a specific spot. And this spot was safe at the point that it decided that, but the time between you actually loading and going in and flying in, it became unsafe and that leads to a bad spawn. And it's the system is flawed and, and they've removed it from a lot of systems after they've implemented it. I don't know if that's complacency or an oversight, but that just needs to be fixed where when you press spawn, you literally spawn in and instantaneously that spawn that was chosen was the spawn that was safe. And that will uh, automatically save a lot of easy deaths that just happened from the stupid loading camera that should not be a thing. Round war overall, like I'm not a fan of vehicles in the game. So for me, it doesn't necessarily appeal to me. As a battlefield style player, it seems like people are loving it. The sniping does feel great because the ranges are there. We don't have attached to make them like hit scan. So there's a lot of bullet drop, a lot of fun in that regard. I think uh, that pretty much there shouldn't be any vehicles with lethal equipment on them, like IE tanks. I think those should be a, a kill streak or a score streak. You want that particular streak, you call it in, and that's something you got to earn. Because imagine that's like an 8 to 12 kill streak. That's just for free. People get it right off the bat. Obviously, you can destroy them, but they respawn automatically. Guess how long it's going to take someone to get 8 to 12 kills? I think the vehicles should be good for traversing, but that's just my own personal opinion. Like, that's always been a gripe, even in Ground War and Modern Warfare. So that mode overall plays like you'd expect. Basically, if you're a Battlefield refugee, you're probably going to play a lot of that. It's going to kind of carry you over until Battlefield fixes their mess that they've gotten going on for probably the next five to six years. They're not going to have a playable game um, that you actually want to play that'll hold you over so that'll be good especially if you're going to transition to warzone you can kind of grind that for three weeks use different things and then you'll be able to use those weapons within warzone and dmz that transition us to a little bit of invasion while we're on the topic of ground war and the ai in this is just like you don't know what the heck you're getting most of them are lower than recruit bots clueless basically have no purpose in being there so they really need to deliver on that because a lot of the gassing up and promises they've made about ai or like bolstering them up making them amazing but nothing we've seen in our early play test and this has kind of demonstrated any kind of confidence that the ai will be a a good part of the game so like i mentioned earlier slide canceling is another issue that i think i have a con with as well because initially slide canceling was implemented in the game and we kind of found it as a way to traverse Warzone map or Verdansk, 
a little bit faster. And with this game, they've removed that. So now you're going to be moving a little bit slower because you're not getting those instant slide cancels. But the movement speed in this is about 5% slower. So now we're slower and then we don't have the opportunity to go faster. I think that's kind of lean more people that maybe the dynamic is they want you to use vehicles more often. If you're going to be traveling by foot a long distance, you just got to take a vehicle. So we'll see kind of how that plays out because that destroys a lot of controllers. But at the end of the day, it does give you a little bit of that 15% speed boost or so that we were able to get in Verdansk and in Caldera or Rebirth Island or whatever from the slide cancel. So I think the, the base movement speed, even if it's only for those, probably needs to be bumped up a little bit so it doesn't take you a half an hour to traverse uh, across the map if you want to avoid, you know, being being loud with the vehicle. And this was introduced in 2019, mounting. I don't think it should be in the game at all. Obviously, we modified it in Vanguard where you get the little sliding mount. Cold War removed it. But at the end of the day, I don't think mounting should be a Call of Duty mechanic. I think we're in a first-person shooter. We're not in a tactical shooter, even though they will make a lot of elements feel that way. At the end of the day, the Call of Duty is not a tactical shooter. Stuns and flashes are incredibly annoying. Uh, and I think even when you use Battle Hardened, because it's a perk one, you can actually use it on pretty much every class. It still doesn't help. You still feel like you're running in slow motion. The flashes blind you. I think they need to nerf them down and make them usable where, like, actually Battle Hardened hurt works or... They just need to reduce the effectiveness and then battle harden when it is working. It'll actually make it feel like it works. But at the end of the day, that is a huge thing because everyone gets a lethal and a tactical. So you're almost guaranteed to deal with them on, on a regular basis within a 6v6 match. Um, Skill-based matchmaking is back. It was in the beta. It's going to be in the full game. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And because of that, there's always going to be workarounds. Because when you separate a group of players that is a little bit below average from everybody else, um, there's ways to exploit to get into that lobby. It's rather easy super simple and i think that's the flaw with the system so unless they're able to manage how to figure that out they got to figure out how to loosen it up so it's not so damn easy just to get into the easiest lobby possible and this is shown multiple times you can look up a lot of gameplay on youtube right now where people are just running around like a chicken with their head cut off getting 70 plus kills and they don't have a lot of deaths probably an easier lobby not always the case and that's kind of the problem with this system because sometimes if i want to play and I want to play super campy, sentinel, or whatever, and I end up going 40 and 5. You guys would go, all right, well, he kind of camped, whatever, right? But everyone's shooting in the lobby, and I make them look body because I'm literally at an angle where they can't see me. They jump out. They get instantly deleted because there's no TTK. So regardless of our skill difference, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I deleted a guy where he had no chance to react, or they had no chance to react. I could run around smartly, and I can get 60 kills and 18 deaths, and it would be like, all right, cool. That feels like a little bit more like an organic match, but still 18 deaths. Ah, you kind of trash at the game. And then lastly, I can reverse boost, get into a lobby, get 65 kills, five deaths, drop a nuke or juggernaut. It was a full game, hopefully I have a nuke. And then be like, yeah. And, and most people are going to look at all of those gameplays and either think you suck, you camp, or you're cheating. So it's like, no matter what, it creates a dynamic versus if I just played, got in a regular, oh, this lobby's a little bit easier. Nice. It is what it is. Uh, versus being able to strategically go and get 10 matches in a row with bots that are basically new players or just very bad players um, that you're going to take advantage of. And that's one of the problems with skill-based matchmaking. But it is what it is. It's here to stay. They make a lot of money from it. It is what it is. Then, obviously, there's countless bugs. There was tons of crashes. There was tons of progress type of issues. Um, there was clipping, rendering issues, audio sometimes issues, advanced UAVs currently I believe if the player is not moving it won't show them on the advanced UAV, they actually have to be moving. I believe the chopper is sitting in one location, there's a lot of bugs, a lot of those things will get fixed, one way smoke, that's all things that will get worked out. That's one of the main reasons for the beta where they can go in and go okay how did this happen, let's fix that. A lot of, there's a lot of stuff that's just not going to change. There are core components of the game that probably won't change, and, and we won't expect to see a change. That kind of lays out the things I like, the things I didn't like. If it's probably not going to change, then it's not going to change, right? Like, So you kind of have to accept that part and decide whether or not this is the version of Call of Duty you want to play. That's up to you. At the end of the day, I'm playing it. If I enjoy it for a little bit or not, that's arbitrary. At the end of the day, I'm going to level up my guns. I'm playing Warzone 2 and DMZ which I'm sure a lot of you guys are because there's going to be a huge advantage in always having the meta weapons just like any other game. Love to know your guys' thoughts. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.